Um, but this, this evening's talk is on the extended mind, by which I mean the mind extended beyond the brain. And what I'm going to be suggesting this evening is that our minds are much more extensive than our heads. Um, they stretch out uh, beyond our heads and beyond our bodies through fields, uh, mental fields. Now, we're all used to the idea of fields uh, which stretch out beyond physical objects. A magnet has a field which is inside the magnet and stretches out all around the magnet invisibly. And you can reveal it through its effects on iron filings, for example. The Earth has a gravitational field that's inside the Earth and stretches out invisibly all around it, keeps the moon in its orbit. Your cell phone, currently turned off, um, uh, has an electromagnetic field <coughs> within it, um, which, when it's turned on, um, uh, has, uh, sends out uh, um, radio waves, electromagnetic waves, beyond the cell phone. The fields are invisible regions of influence that structure things or cause effects uh, within their region of influence. And I think that our minds are systems of fields that are normally centered in our brains, but stretch out far beyond them, just as a magnetic field's in the magnet and stretches out beyond it. They stretch out invisibly. This room is full of invisible radio and television and cell phone transmissions. We can't see them. Um, and, and I think our mental fields are invisible in the same way, but nevertheless have effects, just like um, electromagnetic and gravitational fields have effects. That's what I'm talking about this evening. That's just an overview, so you see the kind of thing I'm saying. And the reason that this is different from what you're used to hearing is that the normal options we have about the nature of the mind are two. We've had a choice of two models. The two mainstream models are firstly the materialist model. The mind is the brain. It's nothing but the activity of the brain, and it's inside your head. The other is the Cartesian dualist model that I talked about a couple of days ago. Um, the mind and the body are totally separate. The mind's not in space and time. It's immaterial and of a totally different nature. So it's non material and it's not located in space and time. What I'm suggesting is something that's intermediate. The, the mind is located in space and time. Your minds and my minds are right now located inside this room. Um, and uh, it, they, they are located in space and time. They're normally centered in the brain, but they stretch out far beyond it. Now, <clears throat> the easiest way to understand how minds may stretch out beyond brains is to consider the nature of vision. And I'm talking now about regular vision, like you seeing me now, rather than visionary experiences, William Blake, and so forth. I'm talking about ordinary vision. How do you see? Everyone in this room knows the standard theory. The standard theory is that as you see me now, light's reflected from me, travels through the electromagnetic field, enters your eyes, inverted images on your retinas, changes in the cone cells, impulses up the optic nerves, and regions of activity in the brain, which can be revealed in great detail by brain scanning techniques. We know more about what happens in the brain than, ever, than has ever been known before. And all this is very good as far as it goes. But the trouble is it doesn't go that far in explaining vision. Uh, first of all, uh, all it does really is describe changes happening in the brain. Well, is that the same as vision? Well, no. First of all, when you see something, you're conscious of what you're seeing. There's no explanation in any of this for consciousness itself. As I mentioned on Friday evening, the very existence of consciousness is called the hard problem, because there's nothing in physical and chemical sciences um, that could explain why anything should be conscious. But the point that I'm stressing this evening is not so much the consciousness issue as the question of where is your vision located? You see, the standard theory says you have all these changes happen in the brain, and then you see something. Now, you're seeing me and you're seeing this room in three dimensions and in full color. Um, where is that visual image, where is that visual experience located? The conventional theory says it's inside your head. All mental activity is inside your head. It's nothing but the activity of the brain. And the activity of the brain is described by neurophysiology. 
some modern consciousness researchers say that what happens is that the brain then produces a virtual reality display inside the head in three dimensions in full color. And that's what you're experiencing. Well, this is just a theory. When people have done brain operations on conscious patients, no one's ever seen a three-dimensional uh, virtual reality display inside anyone's head. Um, so this is simply an act of faith. Uh, but it's taken for granted by materialists that this is what's happening.